Welcome to this installment of the Getting Started with the National Systems video series. In this presentation, I'll be talking about accessing the Compute Canada National Systems environment. As an overview, in this presentation, we'll be talking about logging into the compute systems using the SSH Unix command, and then talking about some Windows clients uh, to replicate that behavior, and then accessing the file systems and transferring files using the SCP Unix command, mounting a drive with SSHFS, and then using the Globus portal. The addresses and other details about the systems can be found on the Compute Canada wiki pages. So these are the addresses that you'll need to access the system with the different resources that we'll be talking about today. The Gram and Cedar addresses are gram.computecanada.ca and cedar.computecanada.ca. When using the Globus portal, you'll need the name, names of the endpoints end of those locations. For example, Compute Canada, hashtag Gram. All that information is available in the wiki page. For example, this is the wiki page for Gram. Where if we scroll down, we see the address and the endpoints here. This is followed by more details about the system, including the file systems available and the node structures. In terms of logging into the systems from a Unix terminal, the SSH login, we can do right now to the virtual test and development system.computecanada.ca. And this form is simply SSH, the username at the system you'd like to log into. And from a local terminal, I'll just demonstrate this. SSH, my username at the virtual test and development system dot Canada CA. Once I enter this command, I'll be prompted for my password where I enter my Compute Canada credentials. And then this will bring me to the system. This will put me in the login node for the system where I can use typical commands like list directories that I currently have there. Once you're logged into a system, you log, to the log back out and return to your local machine. Simply type in log out. Now, although these Unix terminals such as Bash are not available on Windows computers, Programs such as MOBA Xterm allow you to perform logins and file transfers, very similar to how you would do it on a Unix system. Here's an example of a local terminal using MOBA Xterm on a Windows machine. And as you can see, the similar commands can be used from this terminal. It replicates the behavior of being on a Mac or a Linux computer. In terms of transferring files, we can use the SCP command from a Unix terminal and basically give it the address and then the path of where you'd like to put your, uh, your folder or file. In this example, secure copy dash R means recursively include the entire folder with everything below it, my username at the address, and then the path to the directory, in this case, my home directory. As an example, I'm in this folder on my local machine. I have a couple folders in here, and I'd like to transfer my data project up to VTDS. I do scp-r. My data project is the thing that I'd like to move recursively, and then I'm going to send it to vtds.computecanada.ca, and the path into the directory where I'd like it to go. In this case, I'm just going to put it in my home directory. Enter. Without SSH keys, I'll be prompted for my Compute Canada password. Enter it. And then the files are transferred. So again, from here, I can just hit the up key. I can log into that system. And now, when I'm there, I can list files, and I'll see my data project folder up on the remote path. I can log back out again and return to my local computer. Now, another efficient way of working with data while it's in the remote file systems is mounting the remote file system to a local directory. So SSHFS mount is a, is a valuable way of doing this. So from a Unix terminal to SSHFS mount, we simply add the path of the folder that you would like to mount to a local directory. In this case, I'm going to use SSHFS, me, 
at vtds.compute.canada.ca, the path to the folder that I would like to mount, and then the path to the local folder where I would like to mount it to. Now, the important thing is that once the remote path is mounted, local software can be used on the files in the remote system. For example, you can use your, your local computer's file browser, text editors like gedit, as well as other tools like melt, and I'll demonstrate that now. So in my local directory here, if I list the folders, I can see there's the my data project that I've transferred over to the cluster. And locally, there's also my remote mount. So what I'd like to do is mount the folder that I moved remotely to see what's in it over there, but I'll mount it into my remote mount location. The way that I'll do that is sshfs, the folder that I want to mount, and then in the root directory, so home, J, Dishard, and then over there it's called my inner project. And then the place that I want to mount it here locally, which is in this directory called my remote mount. So the command is sshfs, the remote system path to the folder that I would like to mount locally, and then the empty folder where I would like to mount it. Enter, and this will ask for my credentials. And then this should mount the folder locally. So now that this folder the remote folder is mounted locally to my mount. I can use software on my local computer, for example, my file browser. So the my data project, where the data were originally, I have my three data files. And now after I've transferred them over there and looked in the mount, I see that they are there as well. Now, what I can also do is I can use any software, for example, my local file editors, and I can go in here and I can you know, edit the text file over there. This is the file that actually exists on the remote uh, directory, and I can save it. Now, another thing that we can do, now that we have our original data that is here in my local machine, I secure copy it over to the remote, and now I've mounted the remote and I've changed a file. One of the things that we want to be able to do is, is keep track on local uh, files as well as the remote copies. A good thing to be able to do is actually using something called meld. On my local computer, I have software meld. And what I want to do is I want to compare my local folder, data project, and compare it to my remote mount. What this will do is it'll bring up an interface that shows both the remote and the local instances of the files. So here we have the local copy in my data project and then mounted in my remote mount is the remote copy. And we see that a file was changed there. If I double click on it, it'll compare the changes that were made and then I can easy, even easily just bring those changes back locally to witness it and now they're all the same. Now, in order to unmount, we use, use mount u my remote mount. And then if we ls into my remote, it's empty. Globus Transfer, for efficient and secure data transfers, the Compute Canada Globus portal provides an intuitive interface. Documentation for Globus is at the Compute Canada Wiki, Globus, and the portal is at globus.computecanada.ca. 
we go over the documentation, we can find all the endpoints for the different regional paths, as, long as, as well as information about adding your local computer as an endpoint. To log into the system, you go to globus.computecanada.ca, sign in, and then use your Compute Canada credentials. sign in. Once you do this, you'll be given an interface where you have um, this, a two-point browser where you can enter endpoints. In this case, I'll enter Compute Canada, and I'll get a list of endpoints available through Compute Canada, including the Remora systems. Click on Remora 5. We ask for the specific credentials for that system. And then I'll be shown the files that I have there. Now you can select another endpoint and transfer files to and from these places.